Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation brought to you by Brightpoint Infotech. This presentation is about Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central with um, a topic of customized permissions. Be just briefly about Brightpoint. Brightpoint Infotech is a consultancy firm with over 15 years experience in the provision of ERPs with its head office in Fort Fordel, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Brightpoint provides services that range from on-premise to cloud. Just we have over the years provided for or implemented 365 Finance and Operations, Business Central, CRM, HR, GP, AX, Navision Online, SharePoint, Power BI, Azure Cloud Consulting, and the Power Apps. We also make sure that we understand your business and in understanding your business we shall be doing the following consulting you understanding your internal controls and procedures implementing upgrading and migrating your data aims testing application integration and hosting Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to reach out to Brightpoint Infotech for any clarification and any questions at sales at brightpointinfotech.com or reach our website at www.brightpointinfotech.com. Yes, it's a wonderful day again. Let's deep dive into the topic of the day that is customized permissions thank you hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to this presentation and as you can see now I have successfully logged into business central and this is my home page just a quick look at the home page and to highlight a few things this is um, on sandbox that is where we are, and I'm operating this company called Kronos with a role center of business manager. As you can see here, business manager. The other role centers. Today's topic touch on some of this, but we would like to deep dive into that particular permission sets. As we know, controlling access to the system so that your internal controls and your functions are maintained or happen the way it's designed to happen would mean that you will take an extra effort in ensuring that the permissions are customized. Therefore, Working with the permissions can be a little bit tedious, but it only requires that one goes through the process because it's a one-time setting. So therefore, with this, let's go into the main work of the day, that is permissions. Using our search icon app, we shall type the word permissions sets. So with permissions, we shall see effective permissions, users, and then permission sets. I would like to click on permission sets. And you can see we have extension permissions. This comes from if we have customized any table, to access that table, you will need permissions for it. And then we have what we call the system ones. This is given directly by Microsoft. And then we have the user defined. Yes, um, there has been those upgrades those, these recent days that um, 
if you want to, you to give someone Excel add-in or Excel edit, you'll have to give them the permission related to Excel. If you don't, they will not be able to view it or use Excel as in to publish data from their Excel to Business Central. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have today is to show ourselves permissions. These permissions we can say new, and we're going to write as custom permissions. And this is custom permissions. So you can see the type as user defined and the extension name because it's not coming from an extension so it will be blank. Then I click outside to save. It's So now it's saved up here. I click on it once again. Now this is what we call permission sets. I now want to go into what we call the permissions. Going into permissions, I'll go on the ribbon on top and click on permissions. Ladies and gentlemen, from here, it's much easier because I would want to do what we call recording of the permissions. And this window is where you see we can create a new permissions. We can edit if there is an existing one. Of course, we can delete particular lines. We can also select permission sets that are already in existence. We can do a recording and as well stop. So when you come to the lines, we shall be able to give the permissions in relations to the following. Table data, table, report, code unit, XML port, menu suit, page, query, and systems. This can be tedious because you'll have to go in one by one. And uh, for example, if we start by table, then you need to come and give each of this, each of this read insert permissions, which many times become so tedious for admin and super users. Now this option of recording what you want a user to do on the system saves us a lot and we're going to take it. So at this point, I'll go up and say, start my recording. Recording would mean that I would have to do exactly what I think the particular user should do on the system, and that whatever I have done will be recorded with all its permissions, then it will be pulled out here. So ladies and gentlemen, we start our recording, then a window pop-up will come. Do you want to start the recording? Yes. At this point, my recording is on. I will now go to the search icon and type my purchase, purchase order. So what happens here is that the purchase order window will open and gets recorded, which means it's available and with this, I can open an existing one or create a new one. If I want my user to be opening existing one, that is what I would do. But I'm interested in my user um, creating new purchase order, so I'll say new. Then it will open, I'll have to look for the vendor. Select my vendor. and select my vendor, and I'll have to key in my invoice number if it's there already. And 
then I'll have to come to my lines. I can decide to give this user multiple select items so that every work goes on concurrently and smoothly. So we shall be able to select a few items. Yeah, say okay. And these items that I've selected will be populated in the lines. Right, we have about six items populated in the lines. I'll come and manage their quantities. Line. Fifty six and then maybe one for this demo purpose. Make sure that I put the unit cost and then ten. Tax group and taxable. So that I am able to have a total of it. Now with this if there are any information that I would want to include at the invoice level or invoice details, I can do so, including payment terms, user groups if they're there, the 1099 information, yeah, 1099 information. If there's any shipping details that is missing, it gets populated. And my new piece is now being recorded. So whichever button I click, the system is recognizing that I want this user to be able to click and also use it, make changes in, it, in them as well. So from this, I'll be able to go back up and then go and release my order for any approval where necessary and my order gets released or send it send a request for approval there is no workflow all I'm showing the system is that this user can send this request for, uh, for approval then I can as well post but I can also print my order So the print icon will come. At this point, I'll just do a preview, which is more or less the same as you've printed. So the system knows that you you have rights or permissions to print it successfully. Now I can also post. This order can be posted in terms of either receipt invoice or receive an invoice all these options, I'm trying to show the system that this user can be able to use them. So in this particular case, it will get posted. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is what you want the user to do only, then we shall say yes. Then we shall go back to our permission sets and then stop the recording. And the, the permissions will be populated in the lines below. With this, you can see all the permissions and all the areas I have been touching. The system automatically gives you what I've been doing. Others, you can actually see it's indirect, yes. No modify, no delete. So the system gives you all the table data, all the reports, everything that you 
need to perform that function that I've just tried to do with its code units. Interestingly, everything. You can imagine if you're supposed to do this one by one, I am very sure you may forget one of these and that will hamper or disturb the user while they're performing their duties. So this record function is one of the best and we really appreciate Microsoft for this functionality in Microsoft Business Central. Ladies and gentlemen, on this I can get back because my custom permissions is already user defined and it has everything that I would need. The next level would be how I use it on a user group. I use it on a user and make it work. Thank you so much. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as our next would be the use of setting up of a user with user groups and making sure that the permissions are tied up together. Thank you and enjoy.